Hey guys, Iris here and welcome along to another video. We're back here on Gran Turismo Sport for the second race that I did in the FIA Manufacturer Series. If you haven't already seen the previous one, go check it out as it was quite the roller coaster. And quickly before we get into it, I just want to say thank you for all the lovely comments welcoming me back. They're really, really nice to read and hopefully YouTube has sorted itself out. Apparently there were some quality issues in the last video that I uploaded despite me uploading in 4k like I always do but that's strange hopefully it's sorted this time around and let's get into the racing so thanks to the last result last time out we're in a much harder lobby this time almost all A plus drivers barring a few of course including myself and 251 points on offer here so not too shabby at all we were car number 18 of 19, so because of our DR, we were well down the order, which meant that I was surprised, as I'm sure you are, that I came across the line to take provisional pole by seven tenths of a second. Much more, well, not much more than I was expecting, because I wasn't expecting to be in P1 at all. And we actually held on to that. People took a bit of time off me and closed the gap a little bit, but we were still going to start this one in pole with a gap of five tenths of a second to the second place driver. So things were looking good as we headed on into the race itself. So as the race gets underway, let's have a little reminder of what's going on. So we're here at Interlagos, we've got 18 laps and we've only got softs and medium tyres available both must be used. Fuel is not an issue, we've got plenty of that so we're burning it before the start and as it was last time out this is going to be a one stopper. In the last race we were happy to sit in second place as I thought that was the best strategy. It didn't work out at the end so this time I'm going to try and lead from the front. And trying to get these tyres to lap 9 so it gives me the boots to defend my position rather than going after first place like we did last time out. Behind us is the German in the RCZ, not familiar with how that does on its tyres. We're going to ignore that and then look after mine as much as I can, whilst most importantly staying in control of the race. But by the time we get here though, through at turn number 5, 6 and on to 7, the German has fallen back. Here is what happened to him. So now that we saw what happened to the German, we have, well, I have no idea what that flag is, but that guy is behind us. He's in the GTR, so that's all I know, and I'm just going to refer to him as the man in the GTR, because as you all know, my geography is far from the best. Fast forwarding slightly here to the end of lap number seven, we had been doing a good job of keeping the gap to the man in the GTR, but the tyres, as expected, have started to hurt, and as they've done so, the gap has closed. We were holding it at around one second, but it's closing right down now, and I'm expecting to be challenged imminently. So as we start lap number eight here, he's just gonna enter the radar, and you can tell the difference in tyre wear as we struggle to get through the center S's, and he doesn't, and upon exit, he is right on us. But the good old Scirocco is so quick in a straight line, he's going to pull out and he just can't go anywhere. So for me, I've just got to focus on hitting my braking points and my apexes and just get to our planned pit stop window, which of course is at the end of lap number nine. The pressure is going to continue though until we get there and coming down this straight here towards turn number four, the driver behind is going to think about it again. He gets another good run on us coming out of the S's, but we just about continue to hold onto that lead. Feeling loads and loads of pressure now, but there's some really good clean driving on display there, so well done to him for not just lobbing it up the inside. And come the end of the lap, thankfully it's time to come in. For both of us actually, as the GTR peels off and follows us in at the same time. 
So we're going to get some new boots on and we come out of the pits in a nice pocket actually, which is good because it means we won't be held up like we were last time out. The second is still right behind us within a second, but now we have fresh rubber, the fresh rubber we so dearly needed, and we're on a harder compound now being on the mediums. We have eight laps left after this one, so time to get our head down here and tick these remaining laps off, error free, to get to the end of the race. But a few laps later we were under attack once more and not because we've made a mistake or anything but the car behind is actually getting caught if you look on the mini map by third and fourth himself so i assume is wanting to get a wriggle on but i do not want to relinquish the lead under any circumstance so i'm going to defensively position the car here and do everything i can to hold on to the lead so he can go around the outside there it's fine it's never going to happen i keep the inside and we hold on to the lead for now. Moving ahead to lap number 14 now, have a look at the radar, you can see that we're still under a hell of a lot of pressure. And the GTR actually gets a great run out of the final corner and is right in the slipstream and then pulls alongside. He's got enough there to get up and alongside and he will have the inside into turn number one. So I need to now think about my positioning and breaking point. As we're side by side, there's no point pushing to defend the inside as he's already there and it will compromise my run all the way down to T4. So I broke early, cut back underneath and managed to just about keep hold of the lead. But by going down the inside, the VW has the exact issues that we didn't want allowing the German in third to pull alongside and I've heard about this guy so I pulled to the left there to give him the slipstream to give him a little bit more of a boost to get him alongside and he's going to run the GTR wide on the exit so the plan here is to hope for them all to battle so I can break away but the South African driver in the BMW takes advantage of absolutely everything and with three laps to go he is now the car behind I'm a little bit worried by this actually as if you look at the fastest lap there in the bottom left he is actually the quickest guy out of everybody he's done a 137.225 so I think it may be a case of trying to hang on for these last few laps but I do want to take a look at how he managed to go from fourth to second so we'll do that now so here we are then in replay mode you can see up ahead the move is about to be put on me it's turn number one and we've got the German behind so he's quite far behind this South African at this point so you can see I've cut back underneath in there up in front and then it's now a three-way battle for the lead the German pulls out so this is what I was seeing here so I moved to the left to give him the slipstream to pull further alongside the GTR and we come into turn number four the German's up the inside and he's just going to run him wide, as you can see there. And the whole time the South African is, well, he's catching, he's catching, he's catching. The GTR gets a penalty and he's clearly not very happy about it as he lobs it up the inside of the German, pushing them both wide, which is going to allow the South African up the inside and into second place as the German there gets himself a little bit of retribution as well. I can't really blame him for that to be honest. And that is how the South African got into second place. We're going to rejoin the action a couple of laps later and as you can see he is right up behind us and all over us. Nipping at our heels here as we come through the tight left hander and up the hill. So the tyres here are really really struggling and because of that I'm going to change down to second here. I normally stay in third to promote rotation and on the exit I make my only mistake of the entire race. I leave a car width up the inside giving him the opportunity to stick his nose in there and he is alongside and through. There was absolutely nothing I could do there once the door was open he was in without any contact and he comes past before we even get to the final corner. Now due to the pace of the VW in a straight line and it being an FF car, I'm going to only have one shot to get this place back, which is going to be down into T1 on what will be the final lap. So I line him up here, pull out and go for it. But unfortunately, in the crucial moment, much like I did in the first race, 
I outbreak myself again and I just couldn't get it stopped or turned in into turn number one, allowing him to do exactly what I did earlier on, diving back up the inside and keeping the lead. Now, whilst disappointing, I'm not going to give up here. I'm going to try and keep the pressure on and hope that he makes a mistake. And he is going to make a mistake here, coming out of turn number four by just falling off the track there, as we've all, I'm sure, done before. Now, the tyres can't get me round to be close enough as we enter the penultimate corner here, where I needed to be super close because of the technical section, giving him the breathing space that he needs to be ahead up and over the hill. And he's just going to be too far away for me to do anything about it. And we're going to come across the line, or preempt at least, coming across the line to take second place. Now, this was a disappointing one, but another thoroughly entertaining race for me. Despite holding on to the lead for all but two laps, one tiny mistake cost me the win. But what is the most disappointing is that I inadvertently constructed my own demise by doing a couple of things. Casting our minds back to quality, if you rewind you'll see it was actually the race winning BMW that snuck ahead just before the final corner and we gave him a tow all the way around, pushing him to start in P3. And then that same BMW took advantage of when I was trying to force everyone to battle with one another. But that's racing, which is what we all love and regardless of that, two P2s in a row, I'll absolutely take it. Now our attention turns to Sardinia in the next round which I hope you'll join me for. I hope you enjoyed this video and as I say, you'll join me for the next one. But until then guys, cheers.